Yes, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the United Twins with myself, CM, my twin bro, Cappy, on the other line. Today, we're going to speak about Manchester United's victory against Real Betis. Blessings to everybody inside, including yourself, Cappy. Ah, Manchester United 4, Red Betis 1. And that was just a perfect response after a turbulent few days. And we'll get into that in a moment's time. But for now, let's get into the Question of the Day. Welcome to the segment of the show where we'll give you a question and by the end of the episode you can provide us with an answer in the comment section below or in the chat depending if you preview gang. So without a further ado, here is today's question of the day. A Manchester United's 9-0 victory against Southampton in 2021 became the joint highest scoreline in Premier League history. Mm. What was our biggest victory against the Saints before that? We started the right way in the game, which to me was extremely important. Looking to go for an early goal and we got it after six minutes through Marcus Rashford. Premier League player of the month, by the way. A move that had some fortune in it, but once Marcus received the ball, sat down Luis Felipe and found the space, it was an absolute bullet of a strike. Bravo had little to no chance of saving that one just because of the power he generated. When you look at the first half overall, we got forward and generated quite a few opportunities. Veghorst had a couple of good chances. I think two of them were offside. The other was just blocked at the near post, even though maybe some people believe he should have done a little better. And I can't argue that. Uh, Guedo Rodriguez had a back pass that Rashford latched onto but couldn't lift the ball over Claudio Bravo in goal. That was all before we conceded. And when it did happen through Ayose Perez, that was a massive disappointment because everyone seemed to fall asleep defensively. A little bit of a controversy in the build-up with the ball kind of rolling off Wanmi's arm before he provides the assist. Should it have counted? Was it a handball? Let us know in the comments. I would say our response after conceding wasn't ideal at all. We looked lack lackadaisical and were once again making our own mistakes. Just before half time even, David De Gea played a pass straight to Juanmi who finds a Jose Perez in the box, evades Rafa Varane who's wrong side and luckily for us, the deflected cross ends up hitting the post, goes straight across the line Damn, and hits the post. Thank you. I mean, at the time, I thought it was in. And that would have no doubt changed the whole outlook of the game. Eric Ten Hag said after that he wasn't happy with the previous performances against Leicester and Newcastle. And when you've looked at our game of late, they have ended well for the most part. But moments where our inconsistencies would show have crept in also. That should tell us that the team is still a work in progress. CM kept on stressing on the watch along that we had to take advantage of this home leg and the great form we've had at home in general. I think we've won 20 of 24 games at Old Trafford mm -hmm. under Eric Ten Hag this season. Incredible record. A lot of the time, United have been able to collect their thoughts and return to the field of play a better team. And yesterday or Thursday, depending on when you're watching this, was no different. Anthony's lovely strike just after 50 minutes helped the players to express themselves from that point onwards in my opinion. And then we got Bruno's near post header in quick succession. All of a sudden, Batisu almost switched sides with us, seemed to lack the energy and aggression in getting forward and creating chances. Maybe as the scoreline ran up, they became a little reluctant to commit numbers forward, thinking of the second leg that's still to come. Hey, listen, Val Beckles added to the goal tally, making it four, and his celebration was that of a man who had been travelling through a desert for six months before finally, finally, finding a well full of water to drink. Emotions were running high for sure, and maybe with that goal, maybe with that goal, hear me out, he could start a little run, maybe, you know, it, it's a big ask, but every little helps. Can Valt Vekos find his shooting boots? 
captain be a consistent goal threat for Manchester United? Let us know in the comments. Overall, Eric Ten Hag, who may I point out, is manager of the month in the Premier League for February, <laughs> with Rashi being player of the month once again, so big ups to them both. But the gaffer was happy with the team's attitude, chance creation, and pointed out that we probably should have scored a lot more goals, and I can understand that. Positive moments from Facundo Pellistri, who came on and contributed to that fourth goal. Really excited to see him work his way slowly into the team over time. But for now, once again, it's about taking each game as is and improving as the weeks go by. Southampton next on Sunday before we look to wrap up this tie and advance to the quarterfinals of the Europa League. So what are you saying? We peppering them with nine again? Question of the day. That wasn't me. Shut up. Editor, I beg you roll the clip, please. A Manchester United's 9 0 victory against Southampton in 2021 became the joint highest scoreline in Premier League history. Hmm. What was our biggest victory against the Saints before that? So, how did everybody fare in this episode's question of the day? Without a further ado, we ain't gonna waste no time. Let's get this answer on the screen. Let's go. Manchester United won 6 1 on the 22nd of December 2001. Almost Christmas setting. Goals from Money Gun and Solskjaer, Roy Keane, Phil Neville, and a hat trick from Rude Van Nistelrooy led them to such a victory. So, if you got the answer correct, slap a one in the chat. Big up yourself, all the 22s in the cut. You even gave an answer. And if you didn't get it correct, next time, there's always the next time, ladies and gentlemen. But one thing you just shouldn't be proud of is if you waltz up to this time, whatever time it is in the episode, but you waltzed up to the very end and you didn't even attempt to answer the question. What are you playing at? How many times do I have to come here? Week in, week out. Restraint, restraint, and more restraint. Try again next time. But anyway, listen, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here as always. Me, CM, we always appreciate the support. And if you reach the very end of the episode, you're a hashtag real one. As always, slap that in the comments. Hashtag real ones FC. And shout out to Preview Gang, who are always here. But as always, be sure to hit a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. Share to your friends and frenemies. And until the next time. We'll see you lot sooner!